Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. Yesterday was Christ the King Sunday here at Redeemer, and likely in many churches around the world. This feast day to honor Christ as our King was instated for the Roman Catholic Church in 1925, but now the Lutheran, Anglican, Moravian, Methodist, Nazarene, Reformed, and United Protestant churches all recognize this day as well. This day marks the last Sunday in the liturgical year. Next Sunday will be the first Sunday of Advent, and a new church year will begin. So, yesterday was Christ the King. You also need to know that I teach a Bible study here at Redeemer every Thursday, and our topic this fall has been the book of Psalms. I was excited to cover this book of the Bible. I had never found a resource that helped me get a handle on this large book, but I finally found one, and we completed our study the week before Thanksgiving. One of the things we learned was that the Psalms was Israel's hymn book. And while there are many different kinds of Psalms, one type is Psalms of Praise. So, as I put all that together, it seemed to me that we might spend some time this week looking at some songs of praise from our own hymnal and see how they celebrate Christ as our King. Today we want to look at a very new, very old hymn, There in God's Garden. You may not be terribly familiar with this hymn, although we do sing it from time to time here at Redeemer. There is much to tell in the way of background. I'm not going to try to pronounce the author of the text's name, but the reason I call it a very new, very old hymn is that the text dates back to the early 1600s but the tune was written in 1987. Let's talk about the text. Originally, this hymn was a meditation on the seven last words of Jesus from the cross, and it had 15 stanzas. Eventually, it was shortened to six stanzas, which left out the seven last words, but did include the other ways Christ is honored. The tune was written by a very busy musician who was tasked to create a hymn for a conference meeting of the Episcopal Church of Alabama. Although he had very many other things to do, he took on the task, and finally at 11 p.m. one night, he was on the organ bench in a small Presbyterian church he served, and the tune came. He named the tune Shades Mountain, which was the name of the mountain at the very beginning of the Appalachian Mountains. His home is on that mountain. The hymn begins by talking about Jesus as the tree of wisdom, knowledge, compassion, and beauty, who evokes from all heaven a song of thanks for his passion. That suffering and death offers healing, strength, and pardon to all peoples and nations. It is a fitting tribute and honor for Jesus the King. Here's how the text goes. There, in God's garden, stands the tree of wisdom, whose leaves hold forth the healing of the nations, tree of all knowledge, tree of all compassion, tree of all beauty. Its name is Jesus, a name that says our Savior. There on its branches see the scars of suffering, see where the tendrils of our human selfhood feed on its lifeblood. Thorns, not its own, are tangled in its foliage. Our greed has starved it. Our despite has choked it. Yet look, it lives. Its grief has not destroyed it, nor fire consumed it. See how its branches reach to us in welcome. Hear what the voice says, Come to me, ye weary. Give me your sickness. Give me all your sorrow. I will give blessing. This is my ending. This my resurrection. Into your hands, Lord, I commit my spirit. This I have searched for. Now I can possess it. This ground is holy. All heaven is singing. Thanks to Christ, whose passion offers in mercy healing, strength, and pardon. Peoples and all nations, take it, take it freely. 
Amen, my master. What a powerful hymn. What a powerful king. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.